All right, so today we're going to um, take a look at doing a correlation in, in OpenMMS, so alarm-based correlation. So um, basically what that involves is uh, grouping alarms together into higher level objects. So, uh, so far we've been calling them situations. So the idea is multiple alarms or things that, problems that happen will be grouped into many situations and allow the, uh, the operators to focus on these higher level objects to minimize the, uh, the amount of work that needs to be done and the, the amount of triage that they need to do. So um, this is kind of going to be like a real whirlwind because it actually touches like a lot of different components. So uh, we're just going to go ahead and quickly set everything up here and then um, take a quick look at um, how that, what that looks like and then dive into the details um, as much as you guys wish. So um, here we have it. So <clears throat> right now I have uh, OpenNMS set up here locally running from um, the one of my own branches. So basically what I did was combine a um, bunch of different branches that we have in the works right now, all stuff that's being targeted for, uh, for Horizon 23. Um, and I also have an instance of Grafana up here. Uh, configured to point to that instance, right, and two different panels um, that show alarms. So, <clears throat> um, first thing we're going to do is enable the uh, Kafka forwarder for alarms. So, that's a new feature that we added in 21.1.0. Uh, so, just quick, we'll take a quick look at how to start that up. So, um, using Docker, I could just uh, start a simple Kafka server here locally. Um, so that container actually embeds both Zookeeper and Kafka together in one, and then I expose those ports uh, out here locally. Um, then going into OpenNMS, uh, I can configure it to use that Kafka server and then start the Kafka producer. So I'll go ahead and do that there now. So I can increase the font size here so you guys can see it a little better. Is that good? Okay. In that local host, uh, I'm just going to copy that. So basically, minimal configuration, just say use this Kafka broker and then start up the feature. All right, so the feature's there. Um, one little thing I like to do is just go ahead and trigger an alarm and then make sure that um, everything's up and working there properly. So I have a little script here that will send an event, create node loss service, some service. <coughs> that basically sends a node loss service event on uh, the first node I have there in the database. All right. Now here I could run the Kafka producer sync alarms. Cool. So what that'll do, that'll make sure that all of the alarms that are in the Kafka topic match what's in the database. Um, so it executed zero updates, as we see here. So that means the alarm that I just created was already pushed into the topic, and it didn't need to perform any additional synchronization. So the topic is created, and there's one alarm in there right now. Um, okay, so OpenNMS is set up now, and we're forwarding alarms into Kafka. All right, that's what we have there. Um, <clears throat> we triggered the sync, so that's good. All right, so now let's look at uh, doing the actual correlation. So uh, the correlation engine, we have that as sitting as a separate project there right now that feeds uh, the alarm, well, that reads the alarms out of Kafka and then sends events to open NMS back through the, uh, the REST API. So uh, at some further point in time, we'll look at integrating it and actually making it a formal part of open NMS. Uh, so it'll be easier to use, and you won't have to go through all this work. But for now, it's sitting uh, it's sitting outside of it. So um, to be able to go and set that up, what we need is a vanilla Caraf container. So I got one here um, in Caraf clean. Okay, so we have our uh, vanilla Caraf container here up. Um, we see there's an exception that's caused because. Uh, OpenNMS is already running, and it's already bound to one of those ports, um, but we don't use it, so we can safely ignore that here. Um, so now we got the <coughs> Caraf instance up. So install the feature repository, and 
this next part here is we're going to go ahead and uh, configure the features we're going to use. Um, this first part points it to the Kafka server that we have set up, and the second part uh, points it to the right REST API endpoint. Um, so everything's just uh, local host here. Uh, pretty straightforward. Good. Uh, now we'll pump up the logging a little. Okay. And then we're going to install these features. So um, just to go over it quickly, we're installing three different features. Um, so the, the correlation engine is very modular. So um, this first part is the OpenMS data source. So that's where it uh, feeds the alarms from. It's written so that it can actually have many data sources and possibly integrate with uh, um, other monitoring systems or other sources of alarms directly. Um, then we're installing um, the cluster engine. So again, it's built so that there can have be different correlation engines that take different strategies for correlating the alarms. Um, so now we're going to install the, the clustering one and then um, install the main driver. So what the driver does, it basically links the data source and the engine together. So it pulls in the alarms. Uh, notifies the engine, takes the output of the engine, and gives it back to the data source. So we install all of these guys. Okay. And then we could just follow the logs in this side, this one here. We shouldn't see any errors if everything's fine yet. <coughs> okay, cool. Um, so now we have OpenNMS up, sending alarms to Kafka, and we have the correlation engine here uh, that's processing alarms and trying to group them together and create the situations. So uh, this console here is Kafka. So now uh, what I'm going to do is just create a series of alarms by running that alarm.sh script. And that's just going to create a bunch of node loss service events. So uh, what effectively will happen here is we're going to have a bunch of node loss service events on the same node. Right, in a very short amount of time. So the correlation engine should uh, group these together in a single situation. The, the idea here is, okay, all this happened on the same node, small window of time, they must be somewhat related. We don't know which one is the true cause, but these are likely related somehow, right? That way the operator has a single thing to go look at, all this happened at once. So uh, let's run alarms. Okay, and now we're changing back Following the logs here, um, we see that the correlation engine got notified of a, a series of alarms. And we'll wait and see what happens. All right, a bunch of stuff. <coughs> and we see here, successfully created incident. Um, so it did create uh, a situation in OpenNMS. So let's go and see, uh, look at our Grafana console. And we have all these all these these alarms there now. Um, we have the sum service, which is the one that I triggered just to test things, and then we have these five here um, <coughs> that I just triggered with the alarm data shade script. So in this top panel of situations, we see we have this top level one here. Um, the log message isn't very representative of the problem there right now. It just says you know there's been some problem triggered. Um, so there's still some some work to do there. But what's neat if we double click on this. And you could go to this related alarms tab and see that these are all the alarms that roll up in this high level situation, right? So um, the idea would be to have uh, operators look at this <coughs> situation panel and help that reduce the noise instead of looking at all of these, right? It may be hard to, so um, there's still some work there to be like, okay, all this help represent the problem a little better, right, in terms of description and add extra fields here, but um, you can get the idea that these are all grouped here and related in the, in the one object. Um, all right, so um, that's basically it. So there's a lot of <clears throat> things in the background as to how this all works. Um, I don't know how much we want to go in, in depth here. This is kind of it for the, the demo and kind of visualization of the problem here. Craig, question? Could your resulting situations generate an alarm, much less alarm than one, right? Um, so just to repeat for the mic here, um, Craig has asked, do the situations generate an alarm in their own right? And the answer to that is yes. 
situations are an alarm themselves. They're just an extension to the alarm, right? So situations, a situation is an alarm, but, and it also contains references to other alarms, right? Um, yeah, that's the way it's, uh, it's modeled there currently, okay? Um, <clears throat> let's see, so different things we can talk about. One is um, kind of internally how all this works in AlarmD and the code in OpenNMS. Um, and the other part is the correlation engine itself, how it like go ahead and makes these, makes these decisions. Um, so uh, I think for the purpose here, we could just review quickly kind of what the, um, how the changes in OpenNMS look like and what, uh, how that code has been restructured. So um, kind of this graphic here, maybe we'll look at it here. Uh, yeah, there we go. Okay. So what we've come to realize is that there are a lot of different um, services that kind of feed off of alarms, right, and need, need to deal with alarms in various ways. So we've been looking at ways to restructure the code um, to help make that clear and help consolidate some of that. Um, so the main points of entry right now for manipulating alarms or um, is one first one through events, right? So we have some external source that sends an event in, trap or whatnot, or even um, internally from other demons. That goes to this demon called AlarmD. Um, and <clears throat> we have this new layer, the Alarm Entity Notifier. So basically whenever anything creates or updates or makes some changes to the alarm, it'll issue a callback to this Alarm Entity Notifier interface. Um, other points of uh, interaction are via the REST API, right? So REST call to acknowledge something. The web app, let's say using like one of the pages there to uh, acknowledge an alarm or escalate it or through the ACK daemon. So um, sending an email or something like that, using that to acknowledge or escalate. Or, um, so those are the various ways we have right now for interacting with the alarms. Um, those all go to the acknowledgement DAO. And again, that one will issue callbacks to the alarm entity notifier whenever changes are made to the alarms. So downstream from that, <clears throat> you have a number of different integration points. So the um, Drool's alarm context, actually no, that one is not actually there. That one's down here. Um, but the alarm entity notifier will notify the northbound manager, which will then um, call all the northbounders. So that's uh, kind of the chain which it'll go, so northbounders, we have a number of them like uh, JMS, northbounder, trap, syslog, email, all of those feed off alarms. So the flow now will be uh, alarm D tells the alarm entity notifier, that will trigger the alarm northbounder manager, and then the northbounders. Um, so we also have this interface, the alarm lifecycle manager, um, and that is kind of simplified version of uh, the alarm entity notifier one. And that will trigger other things that deal with alarms like uh, BSMD drools and the um, Kafka producer. So I know BSMD are here twice, but it should really be the, uh, the Kafka producer. So let's just quickly look at what those interfaces look like. Um, so let's see, where's the uh, alarm entity notifier impl? All right, so this, uh, no, that's not the one I want. So an alarm entity listener. <coughs> so what we have now is you can go ahead and register an implementation of this interface, and you effectively get all these callbacks whenever various things happen with the, uh, with the alarm. So um, whatever code you have, if you expose uh, an implementation of this, you'll get a callback every time an alarm is created. Uh, if an alarm was updated, if the alarm was acknowledged, uh, so on and so forth. So we get all these calls. Um, the issue is there's actually a lot of calls here and the granularity is quite, is quite fine. Um, but for many cases, we don't really care about all these. We just want to know whether or not it was updated. So um, that's why we have a simplified version called the alarm lifecycle listener. Um, and you'll know whenever there's a new alarm or an alarm has been updated and when an alarm has been deleted. Um, there's also these callbacks for uh, alarm snapshots. So these will be called on a timer periodically and say, here's the current set of alarms, right? And it'll give you all of them. Um, so that's 
being used to synchronize in certain cases where you may miss a callback, right? So think um, if, um, if the service or interface exposed like at a later on in the startup, so let's say all, all these things may have happened uh, before you even get these callbacks. So you may have missed some. So that's why the snapshot call is there to say, by the way, it'll issue these updates and periodically it'll say, here's the full set of alarms in case uh, you need to perform the synchronization. Um, and that's actually leveraged by the, the Kafka producer and uh, <coughs> BSMD. All right. Um, so using that interface, we can then forward it to Kafka and then do the correlation, send events back in, and, and so on. Um, so yeah, that's just a kind of brief overview of uh, the changes in AlarmD. Um, can go on much further, but I think that's enough detail there for now. <laughs> uh, any questions? How does this differ from rules? How does um, so this is rules versus so this is used to drive rules, right? So the rules context needs a way of knowing when the alarms change, right, and keeping in sync with right, that. This part, I mean, the correlation. <laughs> oh, okay. How does how does this new correlation stuff differ from the current drool support we have? Right, so the way um, the drool support we have now correlates based on e events, so individual events, um, and that's all that's injected into the drool's context. Um, whereas now we're looking at doing correlation based on alarms um, as well. So it differs greatly in that, and we're adding facilities to help group the alarms together. Whereas in the old case of the correlator, what you do is you'd correlate events and then create a new alarm, right, for that. But you wouldn't actually change or link the existing alarms in any ways, right? So this is providing all the facilities for us to, to do that. Right. Any other questions? Craig? So is the intention to keep the existing functionality Um, so yeah, Craig's asking if the, um, if the intention is to keep the existing functionality, and the answer there is yes. It's kind of a different use case than this is, so we won't be, um, uh, we won't be removing that in any way. Yeah, that'll still be there. I think Will's happy to hear that. <laughs> Anything else? No? Good. Um, all right, so I think that's, we'll, we'll stop there. Um, and yeah, if you guys have any further questions as to how the correlation engine actually works or want to dig into that part a little deeper later, we can, uh, we can do that as well. All right. Thank you.